It's lean, it's green, and it's a street machine with a mission. Hi everyone, welcome to Horsepower. Last week on the show, we waged war on high fuel prices using this 92 Camaro. Now, we're out to prove that you can still have a daily driven hot rod with a V8 and save money at the fuel pump. We started on a budget of 600 bucks and after reprogramming the computer with a thermal master from Hypertech, we changed all the fluids to Royal Purple Synthetics. We replaced the distributor cap, rotor, and module, along with plugs, wires, and coil, thanks to Excel parts. Now, for better breathing, we installed a throttle body spacer and a universal ram air intake system from Spectre. Now, we used a tailor kit to relocate our replacement battery and even swapped out the stock fuel filter. Now, using the odometer and a calculator, we found a mileage improvement of 2.1 miles a gallon. And instead of giving up power, well, we made more. In fact, we picked up nine horsepower at the rear wheels and 16 foot-pounds of torque. Today, we're gonna to begin phase two of this project by improving our Camaro's factory transmission. Now, over time, they can get sluggish, use up a lot of extra horsepower, and even impair your fuel economy. To get started, we support the transmission and get it ready for removal. While Mike and Buddy work on getting that transmission out, let me show you what's going to improve its performance. This is a Transpac from B&M. All these little parts allow you to recalibrate your transmission by rerouting the fluids through the valve body. Now, it costs less than 70 bucks, and the result is, well, you get less slippage and a lot quicker shifts. We don't have to remove the transmission for this upgrade, but as you can see, we've also got a leaky rear seal. So after removing the flex plate, we pull out the old seal, and after applying some lube, install a new one. Now it's time to start on the transmission. First remove the pan. Then the filter. You may want to take a picture of where everything goes. Remove the tube. Then the wiring. And the valve body. Be careful not to bend the shifter linkage. Next is both the accumulators. And don't forget the spring. And last, the separator plate. Now we're ready to start the modifications and the first thing we're going to do is drill into the separator plate in the locations I have marked. Now the kit even comes with the proper size drill bits to get the correct size holes. Next we're going to remove the MTV upshift valve and discard the spring. Now it's time to reinstall the assembly. Next remove the line bias valve and spring from the bore. In place of the spring, we're then insert this blocker rod into the bore and reinstall the valve, retaining it with this roll pin. Now we need to remove the snap ring at the end of the pressure regulator bore in the oil pump assembly. Next, replace the stock spring with the blue one from the kit and reassemble the pressure regulator valve. The diagram will help you locate and remove the correct check balls. Then remove the accumulator cover and reinstall the pin along with the sleeve supplied in the kit. Apply some grease to help hold the gaskets and metal plate in place. And also use some to reinstall the check balls. Now we can replace the valve body. With some assistance, reinstall the kickdown cable. Swap the springs for sleeves in the third and fourth accumulator. Here's where the picture comes in handy when you're putting things all back together. And finally, time to install the new filter. Now that the new gasket is held in place with Loctite silicone, we can go ahead and install the transmission back in the car and move on to our next upgrade. Now 
which is this converter lockup control kit, also from B&M. It allows you to control lockup at any speed from 30 to 90 miles an hour. You can eliminate unwanted cycling, but ensure lockup at highway speeds, and that's a big plus for fuel economy. First thing you do is make connections under the box, then mount the box in a place where you can access it pretty easily. Then connect this red wire to a switch 12 volt source. In our case, we're coming out of the stereo. The black wire goes to a chassis ground connection. Now using the supplied scotch lock, connect the small red and black wires to the speed sensor on the tranny. Finally, this yellow wire is connected to the TCC switch way up under the dash, so when you press the brake, you deactivate the lockup. Now we'll show you how to use this converter lockup control system a little bit later on the road. Meanwhile, hang with us. When we come back, we're gonna make this lean green street machine a better breather. All right, it's time for more mods on our Lean Green Street Machine. Now last week we installed a cold air kit and a throttle body spacer to help make it inhale better. So it stands to reason that if we make it exhale better, it'll make more horsepower and improve the fuel economy. Replacing cast iron stock exhaust manifolds for headers is considered to be one of the best bang for the buck upgrades that you can make. Now these shorties from Headman offer you all the benefits without breaking the bank. We found these in a kit complete with a Y pipe for less than 380 bucks. Now we're also replacing the catalytic converter with this stock replacement from O'Reilly Parts Store and to complete the job, a cat back exhaust system from Heartthrob. Before we drop in these headers though, we need to use a little anti-seize so we can install the stock air valve. We're also gonna reuse this stock O2 sensor. Remember to loosely bolt up the ends of the headers first so you can lay in the gaskets before inserting the rest of the bolts. Next, we can bolt the headers up to the Y pipe. Our stock catalytic converter is showing a lot of bluing discoloration underneath the heat shield. Now this can be a sign that the cat is getting clogged up. Plus, they have a lot of loose material in it. So what we're gonna do is replace it with this new piece that goes right onto our new Y pipe. Heat up the Y pipe to expand it so the cat will slide right in. Then hook up the air tube. All right, with the new catalytic converter installed, we're ready for the rest of the exhaust system. Now, Heartthrob uses 16 gauge aluminized tubing in this kit. It's got a three inch front pipe with two and a half inch tail pipes, so it's about 20% larger than the factory setup. So that'll give us more flow and better performance. Well, out back, the muffler is a Velocity Series, and it's double wrapped, and what that's all about is isolating sound so that it's aggressive at the tailpipe and not inside the car. Well, time to get busy. We're installing the system using clamps from the kit and hangers connected to the OE rubber mounts. After making sure we've got everything lined up with proper clearance, we can tighten up all the bolts. We had a cooling issue with this old Camaro when we first bought it. Now while the Thermomaster chip and the new thermostat took care of a lot of the problem, there's still room for improvement. So we're gonna replace the old electric fan that flows 1350 CFM with this new 14 inch replacement we got from Summit Racing. Now it flows 1585 CFM, so it should help us out a little more with the cooling problem. We're installing it right up against the radiator using four nylon fasteners and speed nuts from the kit. For power, we'll connect it to the stock fan wiring that's already controlled by a relay. Now we remove the old water pump. Here you go, Joe, get pumped up. Hey buddy, thanks, and no extra charge for the grease, I guess, huh? We're gonna replace this stock mechanical water pump for this electric pump made especially for the Camaro by Mazir. Now it pumps 55 gallons a minute, runs on 12 volts, and looks pretty cool too. Now in order to keep these gaskets from falling off during installation, I'm gonna dab on some of this Loctite gasket adhesive. There we go. And apply some of their thread sealant to the supplied bolts. 
Of course, we had to go to a shorter belt since it's no longer spinning the water pump. Plus, the original is pretty well trashed anyway. Well, we got a couple of more items in store for you, all in the name of fuel economy, and we'll take the car out, so hang with us. How's it going? All right, well, phase two of our Lean Green Street Machine project is almost in the can. Here's what we've done so far today. We upgraded our 92 Camaro's automatic transmission with a TransPak kit from B&M and installed one of their converter lockup control kits. Then we made it exhale better with a new set of headman headers, a new cat converter, and a complete heartthrob exhaust system. Finally, we increased the cooling capacity with a more powerful electric fan from Summit and a high-flow electric water pump from Mazir. With those cooling upgrades, we can't ignore what goes inside the radiator. A bottle of this purple ice additive can reduce the surface tension of radiator fluids, and that will improve the transfer of heat. One more thing before we fire this up. Most late model cars are aerodynamic, but there's always room for improvement. Like these headlight buckets, they're basically air traps. But we're gonna fix that with our plastic headlight covers from GTS. To mount them, I first laid out a couple pieces of tape to make some reference marks using the cover. Then install a 90 degree bracket in the top corner and the F brackets and finish it up installing the cover. Yeah, those look cool. Fire it up, Joe. Sounds better, doesn't it? Well, let's see if it performs better on this second test run. All right, let's go ahead and set our converter lockup speed with the control box. That green light lets us know we're on. All we gotta do is turn this knob to increase or decrease the lockup speed. I'll set it about a third of the way. We can change it anytime we want to. Okay, after driving 155.7 miles, filling her back up and doing the math, we got 22.5 miles a gallon, so we're still ahead of the game. All right, this is not gonna be any good for fuel economy, but it's gonna be fun. We're laying down 164 horses, a gain of 11, and 23 more foot-pounds of torque. And that's without sacrificing one bit of fuel economy, according to our simple calculations. Well, we'll bring the Camaro back in a couple of weeks for stage three of this project, something just as mean as it is lean. Stay tuned, Buddy and Mike have an engine-building tip for you that'll only cost you the price of a piece of candy. Here's a sweet procedure and tip all in one. Now it's a cheap and easy way to check your piston to valve clearance in your new or rebuilt engine. All you're gonna need is a micrometer and a Tootsie Roll. See, I told you this was gonna be a sweet tip. You'll wanna start with the cylinder head and valve train components for one of the cylinders. And a Tootsie Roll needs to stay in the wrapper for a very important reason, and we'll get to that in just a minute. You wanna roll the wrapped Tootsie Roll around in your hands to warm it up and soften it a bit, then place it on top of the piston where the valve reliefs are. Clay has been used for this procedure for many years. There are a couple of problems you can run into by using it. When taking it off the piston, it can distort and give you an improper reading, even if you coat the valve and the piston in oil. That's why the Tootsie Roll needs to stay in a wrapper, because it has a wax coating, which will prevent it from sticking to any of the parts. With the head gasket in place, now we can put the cylinder head on the short block and tighten it down. For the cylinder we want to test, we drop in the push rods and install the rocker arms. 
Adjust the rockers to zero valve lash using the rocker nut. Then rotate the engine 360 degrees to crush the Tootsie Roll. Now we can remove the valve train and cylinder head. And what we'll find is a crushed Tootsie Roll still in the wrapper. All right, the next thing we need to do is chill or freeze the Tootsie Roll to harden them up and it'll only take a few minutes. Now this will allow us to get a proper reading with our micrometer without crushing them and screwing it up. All right, before we measure the Tootsie Rolls, here's how you read a micrometer. Each full line on that scale represents 100 thousandths. Each small line represents 25 thousandths. Now our reading right now on the micrometer is showing 300 thousandths. Now if you open the micrometer up with this dial and set it to there, we're at 320 thousandths. You add the number on the dial to the number on the main graft and that's how you get your reading. Using the micrometer, check the crushed part of the Tootsie Roll. We got 173 thousandths. What we just finished checking was a piston valve relief to the valve itself. Anything less than a 70 thousandths gap on an over rev or a missed shift will definitely cause engine damage. With the amount of clearance we have, we have a couple different options with this engine. We can run a larger camshaft or deck the block and shave the head for more compression and a more powerful engine. Now this is a sweet and simple way to check for clearance and it's something that can end up saving you a lot of money in the long run. It's definitely a step you don't want to overlook no matter what procedure you use. Now the best part about using the Tootsie Roll, you have a little snack at the end. Well, this week for a hot part, we're going to make a little noise about some products designed to keep noise and heat out of your favorite ride. We've used lizard skin before on a couple of our special projects, both as a sound deadener and heat insulator. Now, it's a water-based composition of acrylic binders with air-filled, reflective, and sound-absorbing particles. Plus, when you're finished, it looks good to boot. Now they got two versions, ceramic insulation that's mostly about keeping out extreme heat, and sound control that dampens sounds from vibrations to rattles. Both go on with their application kit, and you can find out more right there at PowerBlockTV.com. Speaking of that, people have asked me all day, why would a Ford guy wear a shirt like this? Well, the reason is the guys that run the PowerBlock store kind of talk me into it. It is kind of cool, though, the vintage logo on a T-shirt, but better yet, <laughs> they got one with the Ford logo, too. Now we're talking. And now we're out of here. We'll see you next week. That's much better.